welcome to the Butler's Workshop. Today, as you can see, I have a really rather lovely case to fix and restore. This is a Globetrotter suitcase. And for those of you who don't already know, Globetrotter are the best suitcases in the world. Really everyone from James Bond to the royal family use these cases. They are the best. This is my one. I did not buy this new. This probably dates from, I'm gonna say around the 1960s, 1970s. It's almost impossible to be exact because they haven't changed since the sort of 1940s right through to now. I mean, now they do some crazy colors, they do some exciting stuff, but the cases are basically the same. It's this incredibly light leather board. They're perfect, last forever. And this one still has many years of life left in it, but it's looking a little bit worse for wear. You know, we've got a little bit of rust on the catches. We've got a big dent just in the top there. And the leather is looking really quite perished and scratched. Now that is all very much within the remit of what the butler does in his workshop, which is where we are right now. First thing, I'm going to try and get these hinges and latches looking good. Now I'm gonna use good old fashioned brasso to clean up the hinges and the latches. I know it's called brasso, but it also works a treat on stainless steel, chrome, and many other metals. Any time that you're using brasso is always mask off the area. The amount of beautiful mahogany front doors that I've seen with a lovely um, brass knocker, butlers love a lovely brass knocker, and around the knockers are um, stains from years of brasso getting onto the wood. So always just take that little bit of time to mask it off. Because even though I am going to be restoring this leather and I'm gonna be recoloring it, I have no intention of making extra work for myself by making it dirtier and more discolored than it already is. This is a nice low tack masking tape. The little hint, if you don't have low tack masking tape, just stick it to your jumper a few times and then it will become low tack. And the reason you want to use low tack masking tape is if you use the really strong stuff, you might find they'll actually take the surface off of something delicate like a leather case. Where you have a, a fine detailed shape, what I normally do is I first apply the masking tape and then I cut around it with a scalpel, uh, obviously being very careful not to scratch the case. Don't stab yourself in the finger with a scalpel like I just did, that's a bit silly. Any old bit of cotton fabric will make an excellent polishing cloth for your bra, so I wouldn't recommend buying any cloths, just recycle whatever old clothes you've got laying around the house. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna have a lot of old clothes laying around the house. So just put a bit of the polish on here. Now we're gonna apply this in a circular motion. Obviously this is a matter of personal taste, but for me, I'm not going for brand new. I'm still want, I still want it to look old, I still want it to look interesting. I just don't want it to look ruined. So I'm taking this to a level of polish that I personally enjoy and like. I want a little bit of patina, but you can take it as far as you like and you can polish this up like a mirror. I find this so therapeutic. I think if I made a video of just an hour of me polishing metal with Brasso, 
I'd probably sit down there and watch it. I'd probably be the only person watching it, so I won't make that video, but I think you'll probably be quite pleasantly surprised with how well these latches come up after what is, to be honest, a very small amount of hard work. A little point here, very important. Don't get the polishing liquid into the lock. If you start pouring Brasso into the actual lock, it will not work anymore. So please be careful, be sparing. As I'm sure you will realize, this is a time consuming process. And quite frankly, you can take it as far as you want to take it. You could polish this all day and make it look like a mirror. It really is quite simply the amount of elbow grease you put in, the more perfect it will look. But as I said, I'm not, I'm not really looking for perfection. I'm just looking for a little patina and the elegance of age. What you'll find is once you've applied the polish, you're going to need a different cloth just to give it a quick buff, because when it's dry, it tends to leave a sort of film, like almost like a dusty film. I usually use a different color cloth, just so I don't get the two confused. A little bit of deeper pitting on some of the chrome, but I'm not too worried about that. So there's the one that I finished, as I say. I've just taken it to the level that I want to. Here's the, here's what it looks like as in the before. That's all the bright work. That's all the hinges, all the latches and everything done to a level that I'm happy with. Um, you'll notice that the, the things like the, the hinges on the bottom, which actually get a huge amount of abuse. They get rubbed on concrete and things like that. The hinges and the, the little very nicely designed little caps to um, stop damage here, the little feet, they get a lot of abuse. So you'll find that they are deeply scratched and they have a little bit of rust actually underneath the chromium finish. Now, I'm, again, that's one of these things that I'm quite okay with. I don't have a problem. To be honest, you've got two choices when it gets to that level. A, you've got to buy new ones. Well, you've got three choices, I guess. Firstly, you could buy new ones if you could find them. Secondly, you could probably take them off and send them off to be re-chromed. That's definitely something that you could do. Or three, you could get a chrome paint and paint them, but I doubt that would last very long, to be honest. It would be fine if you're just gonna sit this up on a shelf, but if you're actually gonna use it as a case, which I'm gonna do, because it's the whole point, I don't think that's the best option. For me, the best option is to leave them as they are because I think they look pretty cool. Show their age, show their story. So my next issue with this is the fact that it's got quite a big dent in the top. Now, it's still perfectly usable with the dent. Um, it looks very much like someone has maybe dropped it on a curb or something, because the dent appears to go all the way across quite deep. Now, what I'm gonna do, and I've never done this before, so you and I, we're gonna do this together and we'll see if this actually works or if I ruin the case. I'm actually gonna heat it up. So I'm gonna use my trusty Blaupunt um, cordless iron that you might have seen in previous videos and this craft hammer and I'm going to heat it up and then I'm going to bash it out. What I'm worried about is the heat could delaminate the surfaces because this is a canvas board with leather cloth on the outside and I'm worried that the two will become delaminated, come apart from each other. But I can't think of any other way of doing it because it's sprung so just hitting it will just make it immediately pop back the other way so let's see how it goes i'm not going to get it super hot just like a bit warm 
Right, I'm going to try. Right, so each time I bash the case, it has a tendency to just ping back to the shape it was. Right, what's much more effective is just pushing the board with the hot iron. At this point, I'm really starting to see a difference. The case is taking the right shape. Okay, so it does actually appear to be working. Um, I'm doing it a tiny bit at a time because, like I said, I'm worried if I get this too hot, then it's gonna come apart. I can feel it getting softer as I heat it. The punishment these cases can take is absolutely amazing. I don't know what the wooden frame's made out of. I'm gonna assume probably ash, because ash is light and soft. So I'm just gonna use this uh, hammer as a sort of former right now and to push the dent out. But do you know what? I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, is it dead flat? No. Is it better than it was? Absolutely it is. So safety first, I'll put this iron away. That's why I love the fact that my workshop here has got metal shelves. Everything is easy to grab, ready to go. And actually, I tell you what, that actually shuts much easier now as well. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Now it's time for the leather. Oh, by the way, I just want to say, in case you're wondering why there's a bit of tape around my finger, it's because I cut my finger and I don't want to get blood all over the case. But already good thumbs up, that's great. Which is a good point. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks very much. I do have equipment for sewing leather. I have some filler that I can use for any deep things. But do you know what? This case is so robust that I don't seem to need any of that. So I'm gonna go just for some simple leather color restorer. Again, I'm just gonna use this lovely old bit of cloth. If you're not confident about the color, start on a spot that can't be easily viewed before you start covering the whole thing. Look at that, that is beautiful. So you just apply layers of the color restorer. If you wanted to, you could clean the leather down with a diluted alcohol before you start doing this. We'll just take off any old polishes, take off any marks. But that's if you want it to look brand new. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the patina of age. So I've made a choice not to do that. The corner pieces are actually a slightly darker brown, but still within the parameters, I would say, of this polish. Sometimes these trunks can be like a light tan and a dark tan, or even, like I say, the newest ones are funky colors like pink and white and things like that. Um, obviously, if there is a notable difference, you'll have to use two different colored polishes. And again, like I was saying with the metal work, um, just make sure you mask off in between so you don't get the wrong color polish on the wrong bit. Luckily, this is all dark brown, even if two very slightly different tones of dark brown. So I can just put it over everything. Now, don't worry about getting polish over the metal because actually it just rubs off very easily and once you've applied a good healthy layer of polish to the scratched area just really work it in to make sure that you've filled in 
all of those little gaps and all of those scratches. And I think you'll agree that it's almost miraculous what you get there. It really is. I mean, you look at that, that's totally different. With the leather color restorer, just work that in to the areas, especially the ones which are really heavily worn, like this handle, and just really work it in. You'll see the bits that need it the most. They'll soak it up. Areas with some scratches. What works really well is Kiwi um, Shine and Protect. So this is shoe polish, but obviously there's no real difference between shoes and cases. So just then give the whole case a nice rub down with a cloth. Make sure that you've removed any excess polish that may be left. Now, just to give it that last finishing buff, I'm going to use this nice soft shoe polishing brush. Just really just brings up that last little bit of shine. All right, so I hope that you can see the difference. If you can't, I've just wasted a couple hours of my life, but I'm pretty sure that You'll see the diff. I'm very happy with this and I am going to be using it. By the way, that noise are the straps and buckles inside and restoring the interior. That's going to be a future video because that's too much to cover all in one time. So if you'd like to see more videos from the Butler's Workshop, please let me know. Because if you don't like this, if you don't comment then I won't know and I probably won't bother to make any more so please let me know please subscribe for future ones and I'll see you soon thanks very much